If you don't want to die before you're 100 years old, you gotta have your priorities straight. Today I'm visiting Harvard Medical School, brain and heart of anti-aging research. I'm going to talk with my friend Leon about his longevity drug testing acceleration program, fancy name. And I thought it's going to be a great opportunity to ask an actual expert to rate the most common anti-aging prevention tactics. So before going here, I've requested from ChatGPT to create such a list for me, and I did a pretty good job. <laughs> but then something unexpected happened. It asked me back if I want to rhyme them. And I said yes. And then it asked me if I want to make riddles out of them. And I said yes again. So today we're going to learn and hopefully have some fun too. So, our longevity Oscars. <laughs> Let's see what the first riddle is going to be. Wait, I don't know the rules of the game yet. That's okay. There is a new drug that makes your health the best. It improves blood pressure, sugar, and reduces stress. It lowers weight and raises insulin sensitivity. It put breaks to heart disease and cancer activity. It fights against dementia and lowers your cholesterol. It boosts your mood and motivation and makes you feel tall. It strengthens your muscles and bones and makes you smarter too. It enhances your sleep and sex and makes you feel brand new. It's free and has no side effects to speak. So what is this amazing drug so slick? It's a tall order to feel, I'm afraid <laughs> I have not the slightest clue. If you go to a doctor, that, that's I think what he, any doctor would tell you you should do more if you want to live long. And now you gave it away, exercise. Yes, it's an exercise. When if, I think of drug, no, I no, think no, of it's, small it's, molecules. Well, yeah, yeah, but it's all, uh, you know. That's cheating. <laughs> all right, fine, fine, I lose. On the scale of, like, you go to school from, you know, F to S. F to A is like your usual school grades, and S is supreme. Where you, would you put exercise? What grade you would give exercise? If you want to live to be 100 years old. Do you want a polite or non-honest answer, as they say? Brief answer, exercise is great. It's mm -hmm. supreme. However, devil is in detail. I think you should be careful, like you would be with any drugs. Over-exercising could kill mm -hmm. you. So, yeah, regular, mild, regular exercise is probably the best thing you can do today. There are all sorts of exciting studies trying to turn exercise into, into a drug. drug. Mm -hmm. So exercise clearly improves so many what I would call symptoms of aging, mm -hmm. disease which come with age. And it shows benefit against Alzheimer and Parkinson, neurodegeneration, all sorts of other things. And scientists have been asking how, what's the mechanism? Can we go into bloodstream and fetch yeah. the peptide, maybe signaling peptide mm -hmm. that goes from exercising muscle to your brain? And uh, there are a number of uh, promising leads. One that comes to mind is irisin. There were others which are short signaling yeah, yeah. peptides, which people are uh, you know, attempting to make into drugs. So you can just be a couch potato and take this drug. But today, exercise is probably the best. Yeah, I, I think I saw something about when the patient get to like rehab and spend weeks in the bed, there is some attempt to keep their muscles not as bad with some kind of uh, drugs. I gave it A from my point of view because it's probably the best you can do now, but it doesn't quite address all the bottlenecks if you want to live to beyond 100. No, to me the game is yes, healthy aging, but first and foremost, a radical life extension. Uh, okay, I, we'll, don't, I don't see we'll get to that too. <laughs> any fundamental reason in biology not to extend lifespan to 500. That's okay, the Okay, this, this one you're going to like probably. But you understand now the flow. Of, uh, yeah. It's not drug, not really a small molecule, it's just general intervention which ChatGPT decided to give me. I'm a huge market with a lot of cloud. I claim to make you healthy inside and out. I have many flavors for any taste. But most of them just scam or money waste. What am I? Uh, I don't know, maybe some kind of a smartphone app that tells you how to slow down your aging clocks. Try it again. 
it's uh, it's a broad category it's a market with many flavors S supplements you got it <laughs> so where would you put supplements on and why on that our f to a I, I i think that the large language model gave it away it's <laughs> a waste of money there was this uh, quote from sitcom Big Bang Theory, mm -hmm. where Sheldon runs around supermarket uh, vitamin section and tells people, you're buying ingredients for a very expensive urine. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we might come to that a bit later. So what grade? I, I still need to put a grade, you know, like... Fail. F. Okay. Yeah, this... Okay, this I actually didn't use the rhymes because they were lame. So I just pulled some interesting facts. Human can live his life without exercise to a certain age. Now, Guinness record for no food is 382 days. That's how long Angus Barberi has water fasted under medical supervision between 1965 and 1966 and lost almost 270 pounds in this process. Wow. The record without water is 18 days and belongs to Andreas Mikavis, some bricklayer in Austria who was just left locked and for forgotten in the police cell for 18 days in 1979. But for this common human activity in question, the deprivation record under medical supervision is only 11 days and Guinness Book no longer even lists this kind of entries because they are considered too dangerous. What is that? Well, if it's not uh, zero calorie fast, hmm. then uh, I'm afraid I don't have another idea. Something you cannot live without. Water? Right. Well, but without water is 18 days. Well, you need uh, temperature, f uh, water and uh, uh, calories. Well. That's about it. Well. Ah, I know, I know, I know. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Sleep. Yes, <laughs> it is sleep. So, it, the record was set by Randy Gardner in 1964 and known as a sleep deprivation experiment. And there were reports of even longer sleepless marathons, even as long as 18 days, but they were never well documented or supervised. Surprisingly, well, you also have to breathe, but sleep seems to be more necessary for human life than water or food. As far as I know, again, I'm not an expert, it is a large mystery today. Mm -hmm. This is an effect which is conserved uh, widely across species that if you keep animal uh, awake, it rapidly dies. Mm -hmm. Actually, a couple floors down from us, there is a Drosophila lab that published recently a study trying to figure out why they tried much as you can say that flies sleep, which I think understood that they do and if you keep shaking them to wake up they live shorter lives and they try to look at molecular underpinnings mm -hmm. there is an interesting theory suggested i think the jury is still out if that's the way it works in other species but it's clear that sleep is very important for whatever reason so uh, yeah it is somewhere up there with exercise you definitely need regular refreshing sleep. So like our A or S? A. A, okay. And yeah, one of the interesting studies I've seen that if you do not sleep enough, you're more likely to produce fat than muscle. Like if you have two groups of people, they exercise the same, eat the same, but one group sleep seven hours, another group sleep six hours, you get the same weight, mm. but body composition is going to be skewed towards fat in the underslept group. Right, the way, the way you metabolize food definitely is affected by where you are in your light cycle, oh, yeah, that, that, in that, your yeah. sleep cycle. I also heard about unpublished work where you give mice same exact amount of the same exact food, either in the morning or mm -hmm. in the evening, and the lifespan is dramatically different, essentially because you want your muscle to mop up glucose. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah. From and probably food. align with circadian rhythm somewhere Exa as well. Exactly. 
mice are nocturnal, mm -hmm. so if you feed them before they're gonna run around, yeah, they that's, that, that actually one, yeah, if they eat and go to bed, mm -hmm. that's bad news. Yeah, that actually side note. All those studies on mice, I don't think they ever look when they feed them, and depending on, from lab to lab, it can probably have huge variance. And because mice are nocturnal and humans are not, it can totally be. You know. exactly. Oh, I have two papers here. Okay. Those two papers are counterparts to each other in a way. <laughs> it helps you learn and grow your mind. It opens doors and pays you fine. It sparks your imagination. It improves your relation. It's something you can do every day. It's key for your long life, they say. Coffee, no. <laughs> <laughs> Something to grow your mind. Education. You got it. It's education, yeah. Because for, for one reason or another, maybe money, maybe just keeping your brain healthy. People who are educated live longer even when controlled for income. Mm. So I'm not sure that education per se extends your life. I think that uh, brain activity is good, mm -hmm. you might be uh, taking some classes or you might be just solving riddles, which would not be education, but just you know, being active and keeping your mind active. Looks like it's important. Again, it's pretty far from my immediate area of expertise. Yeah, yeah. I also don't think it, it's directly affecting you, but if you're educated, let's say you're educated in longevity, you might just take make better choices, which would lead uh, to living longer. Like if you educate yourself about blood sugar control, for example, and uh, you start to watch your blood sugar, as a result of that, you suddenly can get a couple of years or more. Or more. That's true. There is a byproduct yeah, of getting it's so educated about longevity. That's true. But yeah. otherwise, I would say learn a new language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess learning anything kind of so. broadens your horizons. There is a second part. Yes. OK, this can be tricky. I take away the power. The dark twin of knowledge. No, give me a clue. Let's say you learn about that blood sugar control. But there is one piece, right, which you need to convert this knowledge into living longer. Im uh, implementation? Application? Yeah, you, you, need, you need to do something about it. You, you need action. Because if you just learn things, as we said, right, yeah. it might be slightly developing your brain, but if you just learn for sake of learning, but do nothing about it, Sure, it's pretty much close to useless. Taking no action, where would we put education on our F to A grade? Well, let's give it a B. B, okay, and taking no action is probably F. <laughs> so take action. Okay, we're almost close to the end. Okay, well, that's, that's obvious. I'm a simple word that starts with D. I can make you live longer if you agree. I can be varied, wholesome, or lean, but I'm not a drug or a machine. What am I? Diet. Here you go. What do you think about diet? It was very important, clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, the diet is a complicated notion. Uh, there is what you eat and how much of it you eat and when you eat. We discussed some of that already. Yep. For some reason, people expect miracle drug. Mm -hmm. But if, if you think of a miracle drug, it's a tiny little pill you ingest half a gram of something, but then your food... Yeah, it's like kilograms. Pa yeah, pounds and pounds, yeah. Pounds and pounds of stuff you ingest. I always told my parents, it's like, there is this pile of pills you take, and then you want to counteract it mm -hmm. with just a tiny other pill or two. <laughs> um, that's what I think about the diet, so, yeah, definitely. So, A. where would you put it? On A? Mm -hmm. And look, we have the last one. Ah. It's not a riddle. Well, it is, but it's probably not. The only way you can live to 150. Frozen? <laughs> no. And you already said the answer before. The only hope for us to live to 150 is definitely exercise is good, sleep is good, we can optimize our diet till nauseum, but that would still have some bottlenecks which we cannot get through yet. Enlighten me. I would like to know how do I live to 150. 
well, supporting AG biology. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> That's like, I think, the only way. Get involved. Get involved. Don't just uh, watch this video and do nothing. Share it with friends. Find a way to align yourself, at least, with living longer. Organize because, and fight back. Because I think the only way any progress can be done in this century, if we want to catch the train, I have no doubt that probably by the end of the century or next century, we'll have some means to reverse aging or at least significantly bend that curve. I have no doubt that it will happen. I have doubt that it will happen on our watch. Just yes, because... Exactly. Be because people just don't do nothing. And I think if we, even if we would get 1% of population actively support the aging biology in whatever form, even just by bringing, we, connecting people together, sharing the message. Definitely, if we all get involved, get organized, I think there is a fighting chance to live to 150 and to if, not to extend old, mm -hmm. miserable, yeah, but sick get some, life. We get, get, get health span, because I think that you cannot get lifespan without health span. They, they almost go hand to hand. And in a way, that's why I created this channel, is to just do my best to get more people involved. So, get involved. And of course, we haven't covered every single intervention, like stress control, community, life purpose. But for that, I have this video where I go in detail into every one of them. So, check this out next. Living is smart, aging is bad. See you there.